Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. We will learn about various types of hydrometeorological disasters. In this section, uh, in this section, we will learn about the flood. Okay, so <clears throat> in the flood section, uh, as you as you know, in the previous lecture, we will cover all of the all of the terms in a flood. Now in today's lecture. We will cover the drought. drought. So, what is drought? You can say drought is a temporary abrasion, unlike aridity, which is a permanent feature of climate. And as you can, as you know. It is difficult to provide a precise and universally accepted definition of drought due to its varying uh, characteristic and impact across the different region of the world, such as a rainfall pattern, human response, uh, reacillations, and diverse academic perspective. So, here we term drought as a temporary abrasion. Okay, seasonal aridity. Here uh, we learn about here we see here some word aridity. So what is seasonal aridity? Seasonal aridity is well defined by uh, you know as a dry season. Okay. So seasonal aridity is also needs to be distinguished from drought. Thus, drought uh, drought is a normal recurrent feature of climate and occurs. In all climatic regions, uh, and is usually characterized in the terms of its spatial extension, intensity, and duration. Condition of drought appear when the rainfall is deficient in relation to statistical multi-year average of for the region over an extended period of season or year or even more. Drought differs from other natural disasters uh, like a cyclone, flood, earthquake, volcanic eruption, and tsunami. Is that what is the difference? There will be no universal definition exist. Okay, being of being of slow onset, it is difficult to determine the beginning and the end of an event. Duration may uh, range from the months to days to as you can see uh, years okay. no signal indicator or index can be identified precisely the onset and severity of the event other one which is differ drought from the other disaster other hazard spatial extent is usually much greater than that for other natural hazard making assessment and response action difficult since impacts are uh, spread over a large geographical areas another point is impact are generally non structural and difficult to quantify and the last point is which differ drought from the other hazard other hydrometeorological disaster is impact are cumulative and effect magnify when event continue from one season or uh, one year to next year or we can say another season okay now we will learn the types of drought so uh, what are the and how many types of drought we have mainly three types of drought first one is as you can see in this figure is meteorological drought so meteorological drought uh, is defined as deficiency of precipitation from expected or we can see natural levels over an extended period of time meteorological drought usually precede other kind of drought according to the legends meteorological drought is said to occur when the seasonal rainfall received over an area less than the 25% of its long term average value it is further classified as a moderate drought if the rainfall deficit is 26 to 50 percent and severe drought when the deficit exit exceeds 50 percent of the 
normal okay so this is all about the meteorological drought again i can repeat metro what is meteorological drought it is defined as the deficiency of precipitation from expected or normal levels over an extended period of time is called the meteorological drought second one is as you can see in figure is called the hydrological drought okay hydrological drought so what is hydrological drought it defined as the deficiencies in the surface or and uh, subsurface water supply leading to lack of water for normal and specific need as you can see in the picture there will be a uh, water supply leading to lack of water okay for a normal and specific need such a condition arises even in a times of average or above average precipitation when increased the usage of water diminishes the reserves okay hydrological drought behind the hydrological drought there will be population is a major consideration okay if the uh, population is increased day by day the hydrological drought is also uh, you can say also increases okay now the third one and the third major drought is called the agricultural drought agricultural drought is usually triggered by meteorological and hydrological drought it is occur when the soil moisture and the rainfall are inadequate during the crop growing season causing the extreme crop stress and whitening as you can see in this figure plant water demands uh, depend on the prevailing weather condition biological characteristic of specific plant its stages of growth and the physical and biological property of the soil agricultural drought thus arises from variable susceptibility of crops during the different stages of crop development from emergencies of maturity, uh, maturity in india okay in india agricultural drought is also defined as the period of four consecutive weeks okay four consecutive weeks of severe meteorological drought with the rainfall deficiency of more than 50% of the long term average or uh, with a weekly rainfall of 5 cm or less from mid may to mid october may to october uh, is called the kharif season okay so mid may to mid october when the 80% of india's total crop is planted or six such consecutive weeks during the rest of the year and during this okay during the uh, crop area during the crop as you can see in the picture during the season there will be lack of soil moisture lack of rainfall okay due to these uh, various aspect due to these various aspect there will be agricultural drought is occurred okay so this is all about the types of drought you can learn here so uh, again i can again i can uh, repeat the types of drought three types of drought meteorological drought hydrological drought and third one is agricultural drought okay now what are this uh, what are the impact of drought so drought produces wide ranging impacts that span may uh, many sectors of the national economy these impacts are felt much beyond the area experience physical drought the complexity of these impacts arises because water is integral to our ability to produce good and provide services okay. 
what produces the both direct and indirect impact direct impact or we can say the primary impact are usually physical or material and uh, in, it included the agricultural production okay uh, reduces agri uh, reduces agricultural production increases fire hazard depleted water levels higher livestock and wildlife mortality rates and damage to wildlife and the fish habitats fish habitats when the direct impacts have multiplier effect through the economy and society they are referred to as an indirect impact this include a reduction in agricultural production that may result in reduced income for farmers and uh, agri business increase the price for the wood and timbers unemployment reduces purchasing capacity and demand for consumption default on agricultural loans rural unrest and reduction in agricultural employment leading to mitigation and drought relief programs okay the more removed the impact from the cause and the more complex is linked to the cause these multiplier effect are often to diffuse that is uh, very difficult to generate financially estimates of actual losses caused by the drought the impact for the the impact of the drought are generally categorized as economic environmental and social what is economic impact so economic impacts refer to production losses in agricultural and related sectors especially forestry and fisheries because uh, this sector rely on the surface on and subsurface of water supply it causes a loss of income and purchasing power particularly among the farmers and uh, rural population depends on agricultural all industry depends uh, depend upon the primary sector for their uh, raw materials would suffer losses due to the reduced supply or we can say increased prices drought thus has a multiplier effect throughout the economy which has a dampening impact on employment flow of credit and tax collection if drought is country wide macroeconomic indicators at the national level are adversely impacted so this is the this is all about the economic impact now environmental impact environmental impact is uh, such as a low water level reservoir lake and pond as well as reduce the flow from the spring and the streams would reduce and availability of feed and drinking water and adversely affect the fish and wildlife habitat it may also cause the loss of forest cover migration of wildlife and their greater mortality due to increased contact with agricultural produce producer uh, sorry producers as animals seek food from farms and producers are less tolerance of intrusions a prolonged drought may also result in increased stress among endangered species and cause loss of the biodiversity and reduced stream flow and loss of waterland may cause changes in the level of salinity okay. increase groundwater depletion land subsidence and reduce re, uh, recharge may damage aquifers and adversely affect the quality of water so the degradation of the degradation of landscape quality include increasing soil erosion may lead to a more permanent loss of biological productivity of the landscape okay so these are the social uh, sorry these are the environmental impact of drought now the last one is social impact the social impact arises from a lack of income causing the migration of population from drought affected areas people in india seek of cope with a drought and uh, several way which affect their sense of well being 
they withdraw their children from school they postpone daughters marriages and sell their asset such as a land or cattle in addition to economic and hardship it causes a loss of social status and dignity which people find hard to accept inadequate food intake may lead to malnutrition or in some extreme cases cause starvation excess and use of scarce water resources generate this situation of conflicts which could be socially very disruptive inequities in a disturbance of a drought impacts the relief may exacerbate this social tensions further okay. so this is the all about the social impact of now what is the prevention and preparedness for this drought first of all prevention and preparedness means pre disaster activities to increase the level of readiness and improvement of operational and institutional capabilities for responding to a drought okay this is called prevention and preparedness okay drought prevention and preparedness involve the water supply augmentation and conservation for example uh, rain water harvesting techniques for the conservation of water expansion of irrigation facility effective dealing with drought and public awareness and education transport and communication links are just uh, sorry are must to ensure supply food and other commodities during and just after a drought successful drought management requires community awareness on a mitigation strategies insurance scheme for a farmers crop contingency plans etc etc basic to drought management in indian context uh, sorry in indian context is to delineation of drought prone uh, sorry prone area in india at the block level okay there are the some uh, indicators generally we can use first one is drought prone area delineation so what is the criteria and database first database or criteria for the drought prone area is rainfall okay second one is cropping pattern third one is available supplement irrigation fourth one is satellite derived indicators fifth one is soil map other another is ground water availability map and next one is socio economic data okay. this is all about the drought prone prone area delineation okay. these are the criteria and database now the another is uh, another indicator is gradation of drought prone areas so uh, gradation of drought prone area divided into three part high moderate and low high moderate and low low so <clears throat> gradation of drought prone areas is required to multiple criterias approach that includes the sensitivity of first one is sensitivity to rainfall variation second one is frequency of occurrence of drought third one is vulnerability of community to drought third one is monitoring of drought so having delineated drought prone areas and their gradation one could be move on to the criteria for monitoring relevant indicators the monitoring indicators will be rainfall and other associated weather parameters second one is crop health third one is availability of ground water and surface water and the fourth one is migration and impact on community okay, so this is all about the monitoring of drought now next one is observational network for such 
monitoring one would be required to reasonably dense observational network okay in this observational network first one first reasonable point is required is automatic weather station which uh, is uh, which is range up to 25 kilometers okay there will be another uh, requirement is automatic rain gauge third one is ground water table observation fourth one is field report from the block and the last one is satellite data okay the next point is the next point in the prevention and preparedness there will be medium range weather forecasting for community level advisory so in this section there will be a numerical weather prediction which has to emerge as the one of the most important discipline requiring the increasing computing power okay to have accurate timely forecast state of art computer are used all over the world currently forecasting in india suffer from the following constraint which are the which are the constraint first constraint is the information is too general in the terms of space and uh, time while forecasting needs are at the local level another constraint is the timing does not match users need other uh, other constraint is information received from the different sources transmitted the conflicts messages okay there will be confusing message another is the language is not clearly understood by the users so these are the constraints okay currently which used by the indian forecasting system suffer from this constraint okay now there will be some uh, drought safety tips as you know in the previous lectures we also uh discuss about the safety tips so in this safety tip what we learn what to do and what not to do okay so what we do and what not to do so first one is never pour water down the drain use it to water your indoor plants or a garden another is repair dripping tapes by the replacing washer next one is check all plumbing for leaks and get them repaired another is choose appliances that are more energy and water efficient next one is develop and use scope contingency plan to meet drought situation next one is plan drought tolerance grasses shrubs and trees another is install irrigation devices which are most water efficient for each use such as a micro and uh, drip irrigation another point is consider implementing rain water harvesting whenever it is suitable next one is avoid flushing the toilet unnecessary and the last one is avoid letting the water run while brushing your teeth washing your face or we can say saving okay so this is all about the drought i hope you understand about the whole uh, whole information about the drought types of the drought safety tips and uh, what to do and what not to do okay so i hope you like the video if you like the video hit the like button and uh, uh, subscribe my channel and press the bell icon as well so if i upload a new video you have you get the notification for that video